I'm Melissa Delbridge. I grew up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and wrote a memoir about that called Family Bible. I live in North Carolina now. Um, I came to Iowa City because I had never met the people who published my book, and although I had an ongoing, you know, correspondence with some of the people at the press, um, you know, via email, and they had, you know, set up various readings with me. And I wanted to come here and meet them. And, I, and while I was here, I had a reading at Prairie Lights Bookstore. So I've been here for a few days, my first trip to Iowa. Um, usually they ask how my family received the book. And I'll always get asked something about the, um, if I think identity as a Southern writer is uh, uh, relevant any longer. All of the reception to the book has been really good, except for one person, and that's my mother. And she's had a really hard time with it um, for a lot of reasons, none of which were the reasons that I thought she would. I, she had, um, I thought maybe she wouldn't like it because I'm very candid about some things with my stepfather, who was very good to her because I obviously adored my father, who, you know, was, I would have hated being married to him, um, but he was a great father for me. And I thought those would be the things that would bother her. Actually, she told my sister that she, and also because I'm fairly frank about sexual things that make her uncomfortable, she told my sister that the reason she hates it is because the woman in the book cusses too much. She, she, yeah. And my mother swore like a sailor. My sister remembers this too. Um, but she, she completely denies that she did. So she didn't speak to me for about a year after the book was published. Um, literally would not answer phone calls from me. But we've, we've worked on that some and we have, we're forging you know, a tenuous bond again. So I'm hopeful that that will work out okay. I wouldn't do anything differently. Maybe I'd add a, sh a chapter about her. She has a, a, I think she comes across harsher in my memoir than she actually is. She had a great, wicked sense of humor, which I don't think I did much with, and I would have liked to have done that. Um, the other question was about the relevancy of identity as a Southern writer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I, I undeniably have a very Southern voice and, and an accent that I think comes through on the page. And I, my work tends to be very voice driven. So I think that whatever topic I look at, I will look at as a Southerner. That said, I don't think that it is necessarily the most Im Im important aspect of my work in any way. Um, I feel a lot of, I think writers who write about the working class, people like Bonnie Jo um, Campbell, you know, or I've, who's from Michigan, a Michigan writer. I, I feel very a, a stronger bond with her than I do many Southern writers because she's writing about working class Americans um, who happen to be in a different region from the South. I don't want to become a professional Southerner, which, you know, is always sort of a danger when you have this accent. People like to hear me talk and, you know, find the speech colorful, the phrases colorful. So. My favorite quiet place is my study. Um, it's upstairs. It's done in very quiet tones, and it has windows of different shapes, and it looks out onto treetops, so I see nothing but sky and trees and the occasional bird when I look out the window and I can go up there, yet it's very light. You know, there are a lot of windows, and so it's a, it's a very light, quiet place, and there's nobody who ever comes in there but me. I think any environment can be really challenging if, for me, it's not so much a matter of a physical environment that I find challenging as it is in a, a sort of, a space where I'm aware that I have to be somewhere at a particular time. I can't write if I know that I have to be somewhere at four o'clock, even though it's 
one o'clock in the afternoon and I have three hours, there's part of my mind that's always watching that clock. What I really need to get my best work done is a lot of time with no demands on me. I found it easier when I was finishing my book um, to wake up. I would, I would come home, I was working a 40 hour week job then, and I would come home from work, grab a bite to eat, take the dog out, and go to bed very early, and then wake up at you know two in the morning and write, because no one expects anything of you at two in the morning. And then I could get a lot of work done. The phone's not ringing, nothing's going on. And so that, that was a really, pro the way I could carve out some productive time for myself. I also used um, Weymouth, which is a writing center in North Carolina. It's a fantastic place. Um, it's the nice thing about Weymouth, it's a, it's a writing retreat. It's this beautiful mansion with gardens, and the upstairs of it is for writers. But once you're accepted there, you can go there every for two weeks every year. You never have to apply again. You just call and schedule your time. So that's been a, a real boon for me, being able to spend time there. I go back to Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, the, it, I have a real love-hate thing with the state. You know, there are things I adore about it and things that just drive me completely insane about it. But I, my writing is very auditory. I, I, I hear the state, um, and when I can't hear it anymore, I go back there, and I can. And it, it, the things that feed me are there. Even if I'm not writing about Alabama, I can go back to that place and I feel myself in a way that I don't anywhere else. I don't necessarily go back and visit people even. I, you know, sometimes I'll go back and check into a hotel and just spend a few days there listening. Yes, I'm, I'm trying very hard now. Um, I'm working on a, a novel, it's actually a, a three or possibly four interlinked novellas um, about people who live in a place where I lived when I was in college. Um, and there are four families who live in households on this alley. They don't really know each other, but they, their lives overlap in some ways they're not even aware of. They have an influence on each other. And one of these stories is one, uh, the character's based on someone I knew as a child and always wondered about, and it's sort of my fantasy about who he was. Um, and it, it's, it's hard to write because it, I'm afraid of him. He's a scary character to me, and when I go up and I'm working on this piece, it's like, oh, I have to spend some time with Benny again. You know, and it's like having a visitor you don't really want to have. Or, um, he intrigues me, but he, he frightens me a lot the way he did when he was a kid, when I was a kid. No. In, in a word, no. Writing is not really a spiritual act, and I do have a, a sort of um, eclectic patchwork spirituality. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, adhere to any set of beliefs, beliefs, but like like a lot of people, I've picked and chosen things from my childhood religion, things from you know, things I read in college, various philosophies, you know, and, and, and spiritual identities. Um, but no, my writing is something that's separate from that. Um, my writing is an intellectual act for me. That's a, that's a good question. It's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. A writer is someone who has a keen ability to focus. I think people can learn to use words effectively or be even beautifully, but I think writers have a keen ability to focus and to choose what to put in and what to put out to convey a time or a place or an idea or um, I have a little neighbor who is 12 when I moved into the house she came up and she said 
I was so happy to learn I was going to have another writer in the neighborhood. She's 12 and she knows she's a writer. She takes her writing very seriously. And one of the first things her mother, I was talking with her mother one day, and one of the things she said was, you know, Colleen has always, she was sort of scary as a child because she would stare at people so much. And she wouldn't talk to them necessarily when they would try to, oh, hi, little girl, you're so cute. But then we would get back in the car and Colleen would start telling me all of these details that she had noticed about this person. And I think that writers are constantly writing. I think we're always writing and we're always, you know, it's like the, you know, Isherwood, I am a camera, you know, click, 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 click. We're always taking those little pictures and storing them away. Focus, I think.